During the 1960s, heart disease was on the rise in the US. What doctors commonly call coronary artery disease is usually caused by a condition of the arteries that supply the heart with blood. What happens is that over time, a fatty substance in the bloodstream called cholesterol builds up in the coronary arteries, restricting the blood flow to the heart. This can ultimately cause several problems, from severe chest pain called angina to heart attacks. Cholesterol is a natural substance produced by all animals, including humans, and it's an essential component of our cells' walls. But when we consume dietary cholesterol, which is only found in animal foods like meat, eggs, and dairy products, it tends to stay in the bloodstream. This so-called plaque is what collects on the inside of our blood vessels and is the major cause of coronary artery disease. At about the same time, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn was just beginning his medical career at the world-famous Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Surgery soon became his specialty. Dr. Esselstyn also discovered that in the early 1970s, the risk for heart disease in rural China was 12 times lower than it was in the U.S. And in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, heart disease was rarely encountered. The link he noted between all the areas he studied was simple. Virtually, the Western diet was non-existent. They had no animal products. They had no dairy, no meat. Even more compelling to Esselstyn was some historical data that had long been overlooked. In World War II, the Germans occupied Norway. Among the first things they did was confiscate all the livestock and farm animals to provide supplies for their own troops. So the Norwegians were forced to eat mainly plant-based foods. Now we look at the deaths in Norway, just antecedent to this period, from heart attack and stroke. 1927, 1930, 35, look at right up here, right at the very top, 1939. Bingo! In come the Germans. Immediately, 1940, wow, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. Have we ever seen a population have their cardiovascular disease plummet like this from statins, from bypass surgery, or from stents? No. But look what immediately happened. With the cessation of hostilities in 1945, back comes the meat, back comes the dairy, Back comes the strokes and heart attacks. I mean, it's such an absolute powerful lesson. But uh, we didn't get it. Because of evidence like this, Dr. Esselstyn was making the same assessment that Dr. Campbell was due to his work in the Philippines. Seeing a causal link between animal-based foods and some of our most deadly diseases. But they weren't the only researchers coming to this conclusion. Another was Dr. John McDougall. And what came through clearly was the diet was the difference. The first generation had learned a diet of rice and vegetables in their native land. But the kids, they started to give up the rice and replace it with the animal foods, the, the dairy products, the meats. And the results were obvious. They got fat and sick. So I knew at that point what caused most diseases. At the time, however, Campbell and Esselstyn knew virtually nothing about this other information. Even so, they ultimately reached a revolutionary conclusion that many of our most crippling conditions could be greatly reduced, if not completely eradicated, simply by eating what they call a whole foods, plant-based diet. This means consuming foods that come mainly from whole, minimally refined plants, such as fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. It also means avoiding animal-based foods, such as meat, dairy, and eggs as well as processed foods like bleached flour, refined sugars, and oil. Campbell and Esselstyn's research in this field would change their lives forever.